Hello again YouTube, Mad Dog here, welcome back to my channel. So on this quick little bites video, I just want to show you guys and lasses a quick little hack that you may find useful if you, like me, own any of these. The real cheap and cheerful compasses. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. So if you guys and lasses are anything like me, you may have a bit of a compass fetish. <laughs> I certainly do. And in doing so, I do own quite a few. They vary in quality, which is pretty much down to price point. So obviously the more expensive, usually the better the quality, like everything that we buy. Um, in this case, this is a cheap compass or a cheaper compass. I do like this one in the fact it has the large diameter magnifying lens, which is useful for firelighting, reading small detail on a map, etc, etc. However, with it being a cheaper and a less quality compass, you can see here the bezel ring, it spins freely, very loose, too loose in my opinion. So the little hack or mad dog bites trick, if you like, if you want to call it that, is dead simple, dead easy to remedy. I'll bring you down to the bench and we'll show you that right now. Welcome back. So what we've got going on with this cheaper compass is on the back side, you'll see the black retaining ring, which holds the center, the guts, the bezel ring of this compass in place. Now that black retaining ring has a series of claw-like feet like crimps almost, if you can see just there, all the way around, which obviously connect the centre moving bezel ring to the outer base plate, if that makes sense. Now, obviously, depending on how tight those claw-like little crimps, plastic cr crimps are gripping the centre bezel, will de to determine how tight or loose that bezel ring is. So the little tip or trick or hack, whatever you want to call it, improvement, <laughs> I'd say, is get yourself a piece of offcut of something like, in this case, this is 36 um, tarred bank line, something around that diameter. And basically what we're going to do is there is a groove all the way around that retaining black ring. So we're basically we're just going to start feeding that bank line into that groove and we're going to press it between those claw segments, uh, segments rather, and what we're doing here, obviously, is the, by packing out, basically, those segments, we are making them, we're forcing them to grip tighter onto the moving bezel ring, obviously creating more friction. So we're just going to pack that in there. It's basically packing, you know, like shimming, shimming, uh, shimming something up. Obviously, we've got to do this tight enough so that the bank line stays in place but not so tight that you're going to break something or slip and cut yourself just take your time nice and easy just poking that in there i've guesstimated already the length of this um, bank line because I, I have had to do this on various different compass over the years especially these more budget friendly ones let's say <laughs> i mean obviously to avoid this to begin with go get yourself anything by silver or anything by sunto and you won't have this issue you know it's like everything we get what we pay for however sometimes you have to mend and make do and use what you can afford within your budget at the time so that bank line is now in place and it has spread those claws out a little ways so hopefully you can see now that is a lot tighter on its rotating action. I can't spin that freely just with my forefinger. I have to physically move it around. Now this is important because if you're shooting a azimuth or a bearing and you've got your uh, lanyard around your neck or in your pocket, when you get to your destination or you want to double check or you go into your next visual reference point or hand railing or backstop, whatever you're method is to shoot and walk a straight line if you get there and your degrees has moved and you haven't 
wrote down, written down your changing um, route, then you're going to be at a loss for your bearing. So I like a compass with a bezel ring that is more stiff on the stiff side. Obviously you want to pack this where it's stiff enough not to shake loose, but loose enough to be able to use and dial in your direction of travel azimuth. So that's it basically, dead short and sweet, dead simple, the little retaining ring, pack it out with some bank line, <coughs> excuse me, garden twine, whatever the hell you have that's that sort of diameter and flexible, get it crammed in there and uh, be careful, don't cut yourself open and that will vastly improve a cheap compass. And for me personally, this is just my opinion, if you're orienteering or doing any sort of map reading, then that to me is an important feature on any compass. Um, but that's just me. I mean, yes, people say write your direction, your bearings down all the time, fine. But if you're doing hundreds of different hopscotches or different, a uh, twisty, windy route, that's not always the case, you know, it's not, it's not always easy, as easier said than done. So for me, a nice firm, <laughs> a stiffer bezel ring is a good thing. Hope you find this useful, if not entertaining, and um, I'll get back to you all soon. Take care, Mad Dog signing off. Yeah. <coughs>